Hello, my friend. Welcome to She Sells Radio. We are talking money objections today. So this episode is for you. Well, I would say if you're getting a lot of money objections or, hey, even if you're not, which I think, you know, when you talk to enough people, you're going to get them. Uh, But maybe you're earlier in your career and you haven't encountered a lot of these yet. Well, here's the thing. I want to talk about these because these are one of the most common objections you will get to people working with you. And they are also usually a lie. So money objections are never about the money. They're never about the money. So when someone gives you a money objection, I want you to translate that into, I don't see the value yet in trading my money for working with you. And this is the thing. People will always find the money for what's a must for them. People will always, always, always find money for what is a must. And this is why in, you know, a poor community, they will still find a way to pay for a funeral, even if people have to come together collectively and do it. Um, And funerals aren't cheap, right? But people find a way to do it. Or even in my own coaching, like the things I've had clients do when it is a must for them to work with me. And it's not a must for everyone. And I, I don't want it to be a must for everyone, but for the clients where it is a must, I have had people take out loans. I've had them leverage 401ks. I've had them, you know, borrow money from family, sell things. And so here's, this is what we have to remember is that it's not about the money. And I want you to get really in your power when someone gives you a money objection to be able to go deeper with them and to explore like what's really going on and what's really holding them back. So I'm going to give you three things to do today if you are getting a lot of money objections that should help. So first, and this is, I mean, there is some truth in make sure you're talking to the right people. So number one, make sure you're qualifying your buyers on the front end. And I do that a lot of different ways. Um, But one of my favorite things is just a simple intake survey before someone can book a call with you. Now, if you're working for a company, they may have their own process where they just want a lot of calls on your calendar. And so you got to kind of, maybe the call with you is the intake. So you got to work within the parameters of how the company's structured. But if you have some leeway and leverage in terms of how you structure the sales call flow. I really like having an intake ahead of time. So for, you know, for our company, people, if they want to book a call, which I love, you know, I love having conversations with people, but they need to fill out an intake first to dig into what's the big vision. What are their biggest pain points? Um, Are they qualified? I mean, we put entry-level pricing on that form just because I would rather people self-select you know, on the front end and make sure that they're qualified and that it's a good use of both of our time to get, um, to get on the phone together. So make sure that you're qualifying your buyers on the front end as much as you can. And if you are getting a bunch of discovery calls on your calendar and then they're not qualified or they're not good leads, put that practice into place, have them fill out an intake ahead of time. You can do it on most scheduling software, you know, whether you use Calendly or I think you can do it with Acuity. I don't use Acuity. Just have them fill out questions ahead of time that are going to help pre-qualify for the call with you. The second, and this is probably the biggest thing, is only close from a place of must. So what do I mean by that? Before I ask someone to move forward, And you got to remember the sales conversation, it's a two-way street. So not only are they determining if they want to work with you, but you're determining, you should be determining if you want to take them on as a client. So that's what I do in my sales conversations. It's like, do I like this person's energy? Do I think I can help them? Do I want to work with them? And if it's a yes, before I offer to work with them, I make sure it's a must for them. And so that could sound like, here's everything I've heard from you today. Here's how I think I can help. If we can accomplish X, Y, and Z, is this a must for you right now? Before you ever go into talking about what it looks like to work together, or making the offer to work together. And if it's a, when, if they say yes, I say, great, tell me why. And so really getting their buy-in and them to say it in their own words in terms of why they must work with you. And if it's not a must, I wouldn't close. From there, I would either figure out, okay, have I just not gone deep enough yet? Or is it truly not a must for them? And that's okay. But if it's not a must for someone, I'm probably not going to take the time to talk about my programs and what it would look like to work together because they're going to give an objection at the end. They're going to give a money objection. It's not a must for them yet. So closing from that place of must 
is incredibly important and incredibly powerful, and it will shift your sales conversations. And then the third tip here, and this is where we get to remember that everyone is a mirror. Our customers are mirrors, our family are mirrors, your people around you, your coworkers are mirrors. If you're getting a lot of money objections, you get to look real honestly at yourself and say, hmm, where am I getting a lot of money objections in my life? And just get curious about it, especially if you get triggered by the money objections. That means there's a part of you that's making a lot of money objections. So just check in and get curious and see, okay, is this a place where I get to grow as well? And I get to stop using money as an excuse and actually be honest about what I want in my life. So those are your three. This is a bit of a short and sweet episode for you today, but you're number one, qualifying buyers on the front end. Number two, only closing from that place of must. And then number three, get honest. Are you giving a lot of money objections in your own life and just take an inventory? And if you are, change that. And I guarantee that as you consistently change that, it will shift in your customer dynamic as well. So I want to hear from you. What did you think of today's episode? I am at Elise Archer on all social. I'd love if you tag me. Let me know your biggest takeaway. Let me know how do you handle money objections and did you get something from this that you're going to start to use in your own sales process to help you? If you're a woman who is ready to break through the six-figure mark and start earning 10K plus per month, I want you to go check out the 10K Club, elisearcher.com slash 10K Club. It's all about you stepping into that next level of abundance and success in your life. You can learn more about how to apply there. And then, of course, over at Elise Archer. All sorts of goodies for you, whether you're, you know, in a corporation, whether you're looking for some freebies to help you, whether you want to scale to a million this year. I got some stuff for you, my friend. So can't wait to connect with you. Go listen to another episode right now. And I will see you on our next episode of She Sells Radio.